The RPM is dropping now. All right, engine fault. Don't worry, baby. We'll get you fixed. Mwah. Hello, it's Carl again. In this video, we are going to change the oxygen sensor or O2 sensor before catalyzer for this BMW E90 M3. We have to do so because this bad oxygen sensor has causing me fault codes, rough idles, and even limp mode. So let me tell you about my symptoms in the order of my discoveries. Before that, I have to let you know that I had a DME tune to disable the warm-up process for the catalyzers. So my car does not uh, do like a Rhythma during the cold start. Second, the symptoms I had only occurred at idle, no matter the engine is cold or hot. So the car feels like uh, normal at a higher engine speed. There were no problem at uh, driving normally, cruising, or even driving hard. So symptom number one, uh, fault codes. I had fault codes about oxygen sensor before catalyzer on bank number one. I ignored this code because I thought it was related to the exhaust modification of my car. The code can be cleared, but they will come back uh, sometime after driving. They will not come back right away on the next start. Second is a uh, loss of power during drive off. So the car felt like uh, unwilling to leave the parking space. I tried to give um, more press on the throttle pedal, but it didn't help. Number three, rough idles. No matter the engine is cold or hot. So at the beginning, it was just like uh, slightly kicking and knocking on the engine. But as the days went on, it developed into a tremendous uh, earthquake. The whole car was shaking badly. And number four, eventually, the limp mode or limp home mode. Uh, you will hear warning gong and engine icon on the instrument cluster. The rev limiter marker reduced to 4,000 RPM. And the infotainment system display will show you reduced engine power. If you look into the uh, codes, the fault codes shows uh, misfiring, misfiring with uh, fuel cutoffs or misfiring on several cylinders on cylinder number one to cylinder number four. They always happen on bank number one. So I did not nail this problem down at the very beginning. Instead, I went through uh, several process of cross-checking the uh, spark plugs, the uh, ignition coil, and uh, even the throttle body actuators, the idle control valve, and uh, even the fuel injectors. Then I come to the conclusion that this bad oxygen sensor before catalyzer on bank number one is stopping the DME from calculating correct air to fuel mixture. So making the car had a poor combustion efficiency, rough idles, and eventually in limp mode. So with that said, let's uh, replace both oxygen sensors before the catalyzer on bank number one and number two right away. The replacement of oxygen sensor is done under the M3. If you DIY, please refer to my previous video about how to jack the car. And remember, safety first. First, let's remove this underbody protection cover. We are going to need 8mm socket and 10mm socket.
now I'm under the exhaust of tank number one, which is on the right. This is the oxygen sensor before catalyzer, and this is the O2 sensor behind the catalyzer. And uh, I'm going to remove the oxygen sensor before the catalyzer. Its connector is fixed on a rack that is attached to the transmission body. The complete work to remove the connector should be removing this uh, reinforcement strut, which has, uh, I think, six strong bolts attached to the frame. Then remove the protective cover of the two connectors. And at last, remove the holder and we can access the plug. And uh, before that, we need to lower this protection trim a little bit so we can access the front screws, two screws at the front of the reinforcement strut. We don't have to release all the screws, two in the wheel wheel and the, the, we release the holding rack here. So we can make an opening here and access the two screws. Three screws here. Rotate 90 degrees to release the Bowden cable unit that hangs the underhood shield. Also, another one on the right hand side. Okay, seven screws. And now off the reinforcement strut go. May want it. Okay, the protective cover. Two 10 millimeter screws. Now you are off. You are fired. Make sure the cable for the O2 sensor is free for rotation. We are going to use a spanner 22 millimeter to release the O2 sensor. Then rotate the O2 sensor together with the cable. We are doing this just to avoid twisting and damaging the wires. Okay, the O2 sensor is out. We'll do the same for bank number two. Let's release the connector for the O2 sensor on bank number two. The connector is out. Remove it from the holder. Right. Okay, release. All right, number two is out. I just removed the two old uh, O2 sensors before the catalyzer from the car. This one is for, on the left hand side, it's the bank two. This one is from bank one. There is uh, always fault codes about the malfunction of bank number one. Can you tell the difference? It is also made by Bosch. Part number is 0258017038. So exactly same as this one. Let's uh, make a comparison with the new one. Okay, this is a new one with a protective cap. 
it comes with a thread screw on it so be careful so the difference is going to look like this the new oxygen sensor before the catalyzer is going back in remove the protective cap and be careful of the thread screw here the new one When we rotate, be sure not to twist, squeeze the new harness. Do it carefully because that opens, damages the new O2 sensor. Okay, we will arrange the plug later now bmw has published the tightening torque for the o2 sensor before the catalyzer it is 50 newton meter on the original exhaust and 25 newton meter on the rear but uh, this one is uh, from acropomish evolution uh, titanium exhaust for the e90 m3 and the published Tightening torque for this one is 36 newton meter. So if you are using uh, original one, you can tighten to 50, and otherwise refer to the manual of your, the brand you are using. We are going to need open spanner torque wrench to tighten uh, the O2 sensor, uh, but unfortunately I do not have that tool, so I'll just tighten to an adequate torque with my feeling and maybe in the future if I, I have that tool I'll come back and check that it's torque again so 36 newton meter maybe about that much okay the harness for the O2 sensor should look like this go in an S shape it's opening toward the rear of the car. And go back in the holder. And the connector will go like this. Fixed. And later, the protective cap has a holder to hold this harness looking like this so we will prepare the holder carefully place harness Okay, the protective cover is done. The harness for the oil meter. Okay, also make it stay in the holder. Okay, that looks good for the bank number one. Let's do the O2 sensor for bank number two. Just by my hand. Yeah, you should go all the way in. There's a clip here. All right. Here you go. Bank number one is done. After we install new oxygen sensors to the car, we are going to reset the adaptation with ESTA. The function can be searched by vehicle management, troubleshooting, text search, type adaptation, and start search. Click ABL, read, delete, Adaptation. 
click Delete Adaptation. On the right, you will see a table of engine parameters that are adapted. The one for the O2 sensor is in item 5. Type 5 and continue, continue, done. You can also reset other parameters as you wish, but we must reset the associated adaptation once a new part is replaced. When all is done, type 0 and click continue to leave the function. Now the adaptation has been reset, let's start the engine. Okay, sounds very good. This O2 sensor replacement is a success. Alright, the oxygen sensors are done. Let's put the reinforcement strut back. Hold the plate for us. Okay, don't drop. Or I'm gonna be smacked. So I pre installed these seven screws and tighten them later. This is the training for the neck muscle. Okay, there are also two in the front, one in two. Six screws, quite good. Now, 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 the instruction says we need to replace the uh, screws and the washers on this reinforcement strut. And the tightening torque for the new screw uh, is 56 newton meter. After that, rotate 90 degree. But uh, I do not have uh, new screws. So I will just tighten this screw to 56 newton meter. Let's do it. Start with the one on the center. Alright, the reinforcement strut is done. Reinstall these Bowden cable units. Okay, don't have to be super tight. Okay, after the reinforcement strut is back in place. The last piece is the protective cover for the transmission. And there are five black screws. One, two, three, four, five. These five looks the same with our 8 millimeter hex socket, but uh, there are two longer and three shorter. The three shorters are here, 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 and the two longers are on the sides. So not to mix with this one because if you insert the longer screw here, that is going to contact with the oil sub and leave a machine mark there. Okay. Come on. Oh. 
all secured. Now the M3 is back in business, it is idling perfectly. But wait, we will feel more improvement back in the car. Let me show you. Okay, sitting in the car, you can feel that the idle quality is much more improved. There's uh, less noise, less vibration. The car is like a smooth on a silk. And the driving off, no more power loss. It just goes like it used to be. It just goes like it should be. You can even notice a slightly increase in the power when you are driving hard. That's all about fixing the issue of the oxygen sensor. Last message to take home, definitely look into the fault codes carefully, regard your check engine light seriously, resolve the problem as early as possible, don't be like me. And I wish everyone a healthy car and fun driving experience. See you next time.